you are watching Redicon. Scoliosis is abnormal curvature to the right side as in dextroscoliosis or the left side as in levoscoliosis. It may be developmental, post-traumatic, degenerative or idiopathic. However, scoliosis is often related to an underlying abnormality and other developmental disorders which may require further workup. This is an example of a young female patient presenting with painful back and scoliosis on AP erect film. These are the stitched up AP views of thoracic and lumbar spine. If you are working routinely with spinal surgeons, you will require full spine erect views quite often, unless you have special radiographic equipment to acquire those standing views, you will have to stitch up two images to get one full view. Unfortunately, not all centers have erect full spine view or certain hospitals don't even have machines which are unable to work with the software which can stitch up these images. Once you detect scoliosis on the images, you must look for developmental or acquired causes. Developmental causes are segmentation or fusion anomaly including hemivertebrae, block vertebrae or butterfly vertebrae while acquired causes are most commonly degenerative, trauma, mass lesions, infections such as discitis. A close view demonstrates spina bifida associated with scoliosis and cross-sectional imaging is recommended based on this finding. A CT scan was performed which confirmed scoliosis as well as spina bifida but in addition it also revealed diastomatomyelia and a bony spur dividing the central canal. A subsequent MRI was performed which confirmed the CT and X-ray findings. In addition, it demonstrated teetering of the card. This example just highlights the need for proper assessment of scoliosis to exclude serious etiology. We know that scoliosis is not uncommon in school-going age due to heavy backs and so-called scoliosis. Nonetheless, it does not undermine the need for proper evaluation of spinal film in younger population. After spasm, kyphosis, scoliosis, the fourth abnormality is anterolisthesis or spondylolisthesis. It is forward slip of one vertebral body over the other, hence it is always described as two vertebral levels. It is graded from 1 to 5 depending on its severity and treatment is based on the etiology and grading of the anterolisthesis. This slide describes different grades of spondylolisthesis. Grade 1 is up to 25%, grade 2 is up to 50% of the surface, grade 3 is up to 75% and grade 4 is slippage between 75 and 100%. When a vertebral body completely slips off the other, it is grade 5 as shown in the right lower corner. Spondylolisthesis or anterolisthesis is most commonly seen at L4-L5 and L5-S1. At L4-L5, it is more likely degenerative while at L5-S1 it is more likely due to spondylolysis. There are certain differences in etiology, mechanism and treatment of spondylolysis at L4-L5 and L5-S1. At L4-L5 level it is likely due to facet joint osteoarthrosis where vertebral body moves forward due to laxity in the joint capsule and posterior elements are still attached, they also move forward and canal narrows. While in L5-S1 spondylolisthesis, it is predominantly due to L5 pass defects or spondylysis. There is a pass defect, vertebral body moves forward, however posterior elements are still fixed in place and no spinal canal stenosis is seen in this level. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMAs, please visit www.radicon.org.